name is Yap Chinek. I work for the Malaysian Nature Society and I'm one of the senior conservation officer and also project manager. One of the tasks that I am entrusted to is to run the conservation project for the Bloom Temenggo. And one of the projects here that we run is the MNS Hondil Conservation Project. The project has been established since 2004 and now it's almost uh, 15 years. And in that project, we try to investigate the basic ecology of the hondils here, of the, all the 10 hondil species here, because not much is known about its nesting habit, its feeding habit. We also, in certain months like August and September, we look at the plain pouch hondils, we monitor their population. We also work with the indigenous communities here. We hope that we can train them to be what we call the hondil guardians, so they can be uh, Malaysia stewards for biodiversity and contribute to our country's realization of our biodiversity policies. And the information that we get from the, the conservation project here, uh, where Hondas are concerned, we also share with the local authorities like Perheletan, Forestry Department, Perak State Park Corporation, so that we can uh, build strategies to ensure that the Hondas continue to thrive in this uh, forest complex. Now the Belong to Mongo Forest Complex is pretty unique in the sense that it has all the 10 hondil species that this country has. To give you a comparison, Borneo has only 8 hondil species and this is one of the important hondil landscapes and we need to preserve this forest as intact as possible by working with a wide variety of uh, stakeholders with the government and also with the in local indigenous peoples here. So you mentioned 10 varieties of hornbills. Would yeah. you mind telling us uh, what they are? Right. The 10 hornbill species that can be found here are the oriental pipe hornbill, bushy crested hornbill, white crowned hornbill, black hornbill, reef hornbill, wrinkled hornbill, plain pouch hornbill, and the last big tree, which are the big hornbill, the great, the rhinoceros, and the helmeted hornbill. These make up the ten. So you is. you mentioned like uh, in Borneo there are only eight, while yes. in uh, the peninsula of Malaysia we have two extra. Yes, Malaysia as a country has ten species in total. Now, Borneo as an island, Borneo, not just Sabah and Sarawak, Borneo has only eight, whereas peninsula of Malaysia has all ten. What is missing in Borneo uh, is are the great hornbills and the plain pouch hornbills. So the, they, they don't have these two species in Borneo. What are the uh, special characteristics of the plain pouch hornbills that makes it so important to be uh, seen here? Okay. The plain pouch hornbills can only be found in three countries, uh, Thailand, Malaysia and Myanmar. Now to date, the plain pouch hornbill is only known to breed in Thailand in a place called the Western Forest Complex mm -hmm. and perhaps maybe even in southern Myanmar. Now in Malaysia, uh, in Belum Temenggo, it, is, it has not been found breeding. But recent research by our Thai counterparts uh, through satellite tagging shows that the plain pouch hornbill after breeding uh, would migrate south following the isthmus of Kra down to southern Thailand and Belum Temenggo and the greater Ulumuda uh, forest landscape in Kedah to spend a few months here from perhaps July up to November mm -hmm. uh, in this landscape before go traveling up back again to the western forest complex to start their breeding cycle come uh, Jan February until uh, May. Why is it so important for us to conserve hornbills? Well, hornbills are known to the forest uh, farmers of the forest. So they are known to take a lot of uh, forest fruits and help to disperse the seeds in different parts of the, the forest. So in this case, they play what we call an ecological role. So they can help the seeds to disperse to other areas and some areas perhaps are degraded areas. So the seeds will have opportunity to grow into large trees and 
you know, populate in a, in a different uh, area. And the variety of, of, of food that they take, uh, fruits that they take is quite wide. You know, they take at least uh, 40 different kinds of uh, non-figs and another perhaps 40 plus uh, species of figs. So in total, they could easily feed on as many as 100 different types of uh, forest fruits or species. So in the bird world, they play, uh, they play a role as farmers, just like elephants do, but elephants will take larger fruits. Mm. So in a sense, they could actually replant a whole forest yes, in years to come. Yes. And, and um, my Thai counterpart uh, sort of estimated that a hornbill, like the great hornbill, could potentially plant 14,000 trees in its lifetime. Wow. How I long don't think any human beings, any one of us, even with our effort to plant trees, will plant 14,000 trees in our lifetime. And the average lifespan is about... Nobody really knows the average lifespan of a hornbill in the wild because it's very hard to follow a bird from birth to death. But we have hornbills in captivity in zoos and bird parks. And given that these are the ideal conditions for uh, any bird species, hornbills have been known to live up to at least perhaps 30 years or so or more. So hornbills are, are long living birds. How do you feel about all of those hornbills in captivity? I think hornbills in captivity uh, in zoological parks or bird parks would have a role uh, to play you know, in perhaps uh, exposing visitors, even young visitors, maybe inspiring young visitors, the next generation of conservationists uh, to love hornbills, to want to study hornbills. But of course, birds in captivity, whether in zoos or in bird parks, need to be regulated, need to be properly cared for, and then they need to obviously follow the uh, laws of the particular uh, country. So to have birds in captivity in general, they must be well cared for. For the general public who maybe, you know, they're not, they're not interested in coming to the forest, yeah. how do you think uh, they can help to conserve the hornbills? I think there are many ways that they can, um, they can help. I think number one is even spreading the word about Malaysia as an as an important hornbill country. You know, when we say when we say uh, hornbills in Malaysia, the first thing that comes to a Malaysian's mind is that hornbills can only be found in Sarawak. So many are actually quite surprised. Oh my goodness, hornbills can be found in where in Semenanjung, Malaysia. Mm -hmm. So that kind of that kind of awareness uh, needs to be further uh, enhanced. That hornbills can be found in Malaysia, mm -hmm. not just in Sarawak. In Sarawak's case, it's particularly uh, interesting because the a lot of indigenous people, they have a very strong cultural ties to hornbill. And plus, the hornbill is a state bird. Mm. But Peninsula Malaysia, uh, Sabah, Sarawak collectively is an important hornbill country in Asia and in the world. That would be the start. Others would be perhaps supporting the work of the Malaysian Nature Society you know, through the volunteer program or perhaps even writing articles you know, if you are inspired about hornbills and you know, get people to know about hornbills. Okay, hold on.